In astrology, the sun doesn't just represent the soul's expression of purpose in physical reality or the core of who you are. It also represents your vitality, your life force energy, your consciousness, and the literal function of your heart. In medical astrology, the sun is what gives you life. When you're disconnected from the energy of the sun and its unique placement in your birth chart, you can experience anything from apathy to depression to physical weakness or even health issues. Understanding your sun's placement in astrology is absolutely crucial to your physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. That's why in this video, I'm going to walk you through the most important things to understand about your sun sign for your physical, mental, and spiritual health in this video. But before we get into the details, I wanna make a quick and very exciting announcement. My Medical Astrology Foundations course is now open for enrollment at the link down in the description below. If you are somebody who's been wanting to study medical astrology or incorporate medical astrology into your practice, this is the course for you, especially if you're somebody who doesn't really know where to start with your studies, who's been struggling to find a structured medical astrology course that layers foundational knowledge and beyond in a sequential and logical way, or if you're somebody who is afraid to incorporate medical astrology into your readings because you're afraid of saying the wrong thing or making a mistake, this is the course that's going to help you get a holistic, comprehensive, and very detailed understanding of everything you need to know to get started with medical astrology. This course is going to be going on for five and a half months. It's going to be taught by me. And yeah, all the details are down below. Enrollment closes on April 10th. So make sure you get on that while it's still available. All right. So um, in terms of the energy of the sun in medical astrology, so I'm going to be going in by element and then by sign. So I'm grouping these signs by element first. There's a lot that these elements have in common when it comes to what the sun signs in those elements need in order to feel vital, to feel motivated, to feel lit up, and to maintain optimal health, both, both psychologically and physiologically. I am going to be discussing a lot of the psychological needs of each of the zodiac signs because if those psychological needs are not met, it can lead to physiological illness. And so we're going to be incorporating both ends of that spectrum because the mind and the body, you guys, are interconnected. The mind and body are not separate, especially the brain and body, right? The brain itself is part of your body. And so the brain helps control the body and the body helps signal the brain and it's a whole reciprocal relationship. And so we're going to be discussing everything in that holistic vantage point when we talk about each of the sun signs. We are also going to notice that for each sun sign, the body parts that are associated with that sign will be highlighted in some way. What the sun does in the birth chart is it illuminates things. It lights it up and makes it more prominent or prevalent in one way or another. And so when we're talking about medical astrology and we're talking about the sun and your vitality, what's going to be illuminated will not just be the psychological components, the physical needs, but the body parts that are associated with each of the zodiac signs. I did a video where I go into each of these body parts and a little expand on this a little bit more that you can watch after this video, but for now we'll cover these in brief as well. And so let's get into um, all of the sun signs and what you need in order to feel vital and lit up and super healthy, beginning with the earth signs. And so the earth signs have in common that they all need to feel grounded. They all need to put their feet on the earth, their fingers in the dirt. They need to do things that are tangible, that are real, and to spend time in nature. Nature therapy is the best therapy for an earth sun sign. Also, the earth signs are very connected to minerals within the body. And so making sure that you're supplementing or getting enough minerals in your diet is going to be extra important for the earth signs versus some of the other signs. And so that's something to keep in mind as well. 
Earth signs need to do things that feel very nourishing and nurturing to the body. They need to engage with the full sensory experience. They're here to indulge in physicality in one way or another. Being a physical being is what an earth sign's all about. <laughs> and so enjoying the benefits of being physical, enjoying the benefits of our physical tangible reality can be very therapeutic for the earth signs. The earth signs do best with tangible sensory types of healing modalities. And so things like body work and massage can be really great for the earth signs. Things like movement of the body where they can really get in touch with their physical body, mindfulness of the physical body can be so helpful and so therapeutic for earth signs in general. And so the earth signs need to be physical, they need to be grounded, they need time in nature, they need to move in a way that's intentional and mindful, and the best types of therapies are the ones that are very tangible, very physical, and also, you know, earth signs are very, um, are very easily influenced by the foods that they eat. Everybody is, regardless of your sun sign, the food you eat is so important, but for the earth signs, the food is extra important. And so you wanna be very mindful of what you're putting in your body, what you're ingesting, not just in terms of the health content and the health value of those foods and the nutrients, but also in terms of the way that it makes you feel the physical and physiological sensations of eating, the sensory experience of eating, you need to make sure if you have an earth sun sign that the, that the experience of eating food is enjoyable, that you're not rushing through it, that you're able to really immerse yourself in that experience. That's gonna actually help your body to digest the food better, to assimilate more nutrients, and all of these things are so important for the earth signs. And so um, moving down the list of the earth signs, beginning with Taurus, Taurus, as you probably already know, rules the throat, it rules the thyroid gland, it rules the tonsils, it rules the voice uh, and the vocal cords. It also rules the tongue and the taste buds. And so um, as you could imagine, for Taurus in particular, eating delicious, uh, nourishing foods is gonna be extra important. Food choices are the most important for Taurus. And Taurus does have, like Taurus sun sign people do tend to have um, a tendency to overindulge because they have so much enjoyment of that sensory experience. And so that's something that Taurus sun signs do need to be mindful of. Eat foods that feel indulgent, but are deeply nourishing to your body that have a lot of good nutritional value. Um, the other thing that Taurus needs is stability and comfort or a sense of stability and comfort. And so paying attention to those psychological needs and that need to feel grounded and stable, to feel a sense of consistency in your life, that's gonna be very important to your physical health. When things feel inconsistent and chaotic and all over the place, Taurus people tend to get physically thrown off kilter very easily. However, you do need some movement. You do need to be able to roll with the punches and to change because Taurus is the sign that's gonna be the most prone to stagnancy. And so making sure that you are open to change and you're doing new things every single day, things that feel uncomfortable to you while still maintaining a sense of stability and consistency in your life, that's gonna be the best way to support your psychological health and your physiolog physiological vitality as well. Um, you know, really the thing that can throw Taurus off is uh, financial and material instability. And so making sure that you always have your ducks in a row financially, making sure that you have your little nest egg tucked away, those things can go a long way for your uh, for your physical health as well as your mental health because when you are under you know a lot of psychological stress we know uh, for a fact through science that psychological stress can cause physiological health issues because of the biochemical reaction throughout the body and so you want to make sure that you are not stressed in that way because that for Taurus is going to throw you off kilter the most. For Taurus, growing a garden and growing and eating your own food can be very therapeutic and very nurturing for you. So thinking about doing things like that, 
putting your hands in the soil and putting your feet very literally on the ground, being in nature, being around beauty in nature, all of these things are very therapeutic for Taurus. Taurus also responds the best to um, to like different therapies on the physical body, so things like um, massage, like acupuncture, acupressure, um, anything where there's actual movement of the body or actual touch or a sensory experience involved. Um, color therapy and aromatherapy can work really well for Taurus people as well. All of these things are, yeah, important. And so for Taurus, Taurus really likes to be valued for their good taste, <laughs> um, especially when it comes to aesthetics and, you know, the physical world. And so, you know, finding opportunities to kind of show off your skills or showcase your abilities in that area can also light you up and help you to feel um, much more vital and much more motivated, much more excited about life. Okay, and so for Virgo, Virgo rules the intestines, especially the small intestine. Virgo rules the spleen, it rules the pancreas, it rules also the autonomic nervous system, especially the sympathetic nervous system. And so what this means is the sympathetic nervous system is actually our fight or flight response. And Virgos tend to be the most malleable and the most um, unsettled and ungrounded of all of the earth signs. And they tend to run anxious. In my video where I talked about anxiety markers in astrology, I talk about having a lot of Virgo placements and how that can make you feel a little bit more unsettled. And so Virgos out of all of the earth signs need to get grounded. They need to put their feet on solid ground and bring themselves out of the little details of everything that's going on in their lives to focus on the present moment, the here and the now. That is something that Virgos need very much so. So anything that has to do with mindfulness meditation, uh, going on nature walks where you are practicing mindfulness and paying attention to your immediate surroundings in that moment instead of going on walks and thinking about all your to-do lists and working out problems in your head, um, you really need to be present in your body more. And that will help Virgo to feel better, to feel more grounded and physically to have more vitality. Virgos, psychologically, they need to feel needed. <laughs> Virgos want to be of service. They are the helpers of the zodiac. And so if you can feel like you have a practical use or that you're helping somebody or you're doing something that betters somebody else's life in some way, that's going to help you to feel more motivated, more vital, more lit up, more excited and healthier too, ment mentally, spiritually, and physiologically. Um, also, for Virgos, Virgos are pr usually pretty dialed in when it comes to diet and nutrition, but vitamins and minerals and supplements work really well for Virgos, and Virgos need um, that additional nutrition. They tend to be um, a little bit, not necessarily physically weak, that's not the case, but more physically temperamental, I've noticed. And I'm a Virgo son, so you know I know that from experience as well. And so making sure that you're keeping your nutrition dialed in, that you're taking the right supplements, that you're you know consulting your alternative practitioner about that. And herbalism too can work really well for Virgos. Uh, they're very connected to herbs and to nutritional supplements. Um, Cooking and eating really good nutritious foods is very therapeutic for Virgos as well. And so that's something that a lot of Virgos really enjoy doing. Um, and Virgos like to be valued for their good judgment and for their rational, logical thinking or, and for the way that they can help other people. And so for looking at ways that you can incorporate your skill set, that attention to detail, that ability to serve and to show up and perfect things and to be recognized for that will really light you up, keep you motivated and keep you feeling vital. For Capricorn, Capricorn rules the bones, joints, teeth, and gallbladder. And so Capricorn is all of those hard structures in the body. It also rules calcification and ossification. And so one of the things with Capricorn is if they become too rigid mentally and psychologically, that can uh, actually create rigidity and um, 
stiffness in the body, especially when it comes to the joints, but really all over the body, the muscles, etc. Um, and so Capricorn does need to work hard in order to feel vital, in order to feel connected, in order to feel lit up and excited and successful, and to have that physical vitality radiating through them, they need to be working toward an achievable long-term goal at all times. <laughs> And so if you have that, you're going to keep motivated. You're going to feel excited. You're going to have that vitality. Um, but when you lose that, you can lose touch with your vitality. And, you know, Capricorn sun signs are more prone to pessimism and to not necessarily full-blown depression. You'd have to like to have a lot of other things in your chart going on for that, but they can be more prone to being a little bit more melancholy, being a little bit more um, like of a realist, which really ends up, you know, veering on that end of pessimism. And so Capricorns need to work harder to remain optimistic and to see the possibilities and potentials, to get out of the weeds and actually see things for the bigger picture and all the beauty and what's around them and all the beauty of what's possible. Capricorns can get lost in responsibility. They can get lost in hard work. They can get lost and wanting to show up and prove that they're responsible, that they're hardworking. Um, and so that's something that, you know, if they take it overboard can cause issues. It can weigh them down. Um, however, they, they do like to be valued for being somebody that others can rely on. They like to be dependable. They like to be reliable. They like to be the one who can kind of carry things forward. They do well in leadership positions as well. And so all of those things can help Capricorns to feel more vital and more lit up and more excited about life. Capricorns tend to be more dry than the other um, earth signs. And so making sure that you're hydrating really well, that you're getting enough water and liquids and fluids, and that you're hydrating in general, like your bo bones and joints by moving, right? And by um, actually getting some physical exercise, um, and even just spending time in water, even though yes, you are an earth sign, being outside, being in nature is great, but incorporating the water element can be very good, especially if you are prone to dryness. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, for Capricorn, the main thing is cultiv cultivating optimism over realism when it's needed. Your realism is very important as well. It's one of your best traits, but sometimes, again, it can veer toward pessimism. And so making sure that you're cultivating that um, and making sure that you always have a goal to aspire to and taking care of all of those body parts that I mentioned before, your bones, your joints, uh, your teeth, it's going to the dentist and getting regular visits, your gallbladder, um, all of those things. Now for the air signs, because air is all about communication and information, your information diet is by far the most important thing. And so it's almost as important as your physical diet, as the food that you're putting into your body. The information that you take in, that you absorb, that you connect with, that you engage with as an air sign sun is crucial to your physiological and your mental well-being. And so you wanna make sure that you're moderating that very carefully and that you're picking and choosing the types of information that you let into your brain. And so that could mean something like turning off the news, switching off things that are negative or that are scary or that cause you to feel fearful. That could mean not watching horror movies or murder mysteries. That could mean making sure that the information you take in is both useful and positive, right? And so that is first and foremost, one of the more important things for the air signs. The second thing that's so important for the air signs is socialization. The air signs are very social communicative signs. And so the air signs need to be social. They need to connect and share ideas with other people. Air signs can feel very depleted, very depressed, very down if they're not getting connection, human connection with other people. And so making sure that you have a really good community, that you're reaching out to people when you're feeling a little low, it's almost like a source of energy communicating and talking to people. It's not draining for an air sign, it's definitely something that lights you up. And so making sure that you're doing that. 
The air signs also thrive on information, that information diet, right? And so making sure that you are constantly learning, constantly exploring, constantly keeping your mind sharp. Your brain needs to be active. You need to be engaging your consciousness with new ideas, new thoughts, new topics that you are not familiar with. So exposing yourself to information that's new and that shifts your mind and opens up the channels of communication and understanding. All of these things are very important to keep um, the air sun signs lit up, full of vitality, fresh and ready to go. And so moving through the air signs beginning with Gemini. Gemini rules the, uh, the brain to a certain extent, but especially the nerves and the respiratory system. Gemini also rules the uh, upper extremities, the shoulders, the arms, the hands, the fingers. And so doing things with your upper body can be very therapeutic for Geminis. And so doing things like knitting or crocheting or working with your hands, uh, that can be very therapeutic and very helpful for Geminis, especially Geminis who have a lot of um, energy that are kind of all over the place, focusing your attention or even distracting yourself by doing something with your hands can be very helpful. Um, Geminis also you know, do really well with upper body exercises because that's an area of your body that's highlighted. And so you know, making sure that you're keeping your upper body strong and you know, using that muscle strength can be very helpful too. And also your breathing and your breath. And so Geminis are the most influenced by air quality. That means that you don't wanna be smoking cigarettes or subject to a lot of smog or pollution or you know just bad air in general moldy rooms and environments you want to make sure that you can breathe freely and using the breath can be such an important tool for gemini suns so doing breath work in order to modulate your um your autonomic nervous system to like amp up your sympathetic if you you know need to get pumped or to down regulate and then activate the parasympathetic if you you need to rest and heal and digest all of these things can be accomplished through intentional use of the breath and Gemini's do really well with that Gemini's of course need to communicate <laughs> they are the communicators they are the social butterflies of the zodiac and so um, making sure that you're getting a lot of contact with other human beings making sure that you are communicating calling up a friend when you're feeling a little low and just talking it out or just having a light fun conversation that can be very healing for Gemini's uh, Gemini's also do really well with journaling and writing out their thoughts that can be a really good outlet for your energy and that's something too that if you're feeling a little like lost or apathetic or listless you can kind of channel your energy into that and that can help bring your spirits up and bring your vitality up uh, Geminis also need to constantly be learning and exploring new things. A bored Gemini is a sick Gemini. Like you need to make sure that you are always learning, always engaging, always, um, you know, moving on from thing to thing to thing. For most people, that's not necessarily a healthy way to do things, but for Geminis, it is. And so, having a lot of um, passions, a lot of talents, a lot of areas of exploration going keeps you on your feet, keeps you on your toes. Um, and Geminis really love to be valued for their mind and for their quick wit. <laughs> and so, you know, make sure that you put yourselves in situations where you can be valued for that, for, where you can showcase um, your sharpness, right? And how quick you are and how, uh, how much you know, right? And so all of those things are really good for Gemini. Uh, for Libra, Libra rules, of course, the kidneys, the hips, the endocrine system. It's the homeostatic systems of the body. And so when Libra is off balance, the whole body goes off kilter. And so Libra in general is the most interpersonal of all of the zodiac signs. And so Libra sun signs need that one-on-one -on -one connection, that deep connection, that interpersonal contact with other people in order to feel vital and lit up and to have the energy they need to keep going. Um, but also, you know, types, certain types of relationships can be very detrimental 
to uh, to Libra's health. So conflict, especially unresolved conflict, can be very hard on Libras. And so it can weigh on you psychologically, which weighs on you emotionally and also physically. And so you wanna make sure that you don't leave things open-ended, that you resolve conflicts, that you tie up loose ends, that you don't just have these things lingering because those things, even when you're not thinking about them, can be eating away at you. And so Libras don't do well with that. Libras don't do well with conflict in general. So if you have a lot of conflict in your relationships, that could be a signal that you maybe need to end those relationships because those relationships are going to be stressing you out. And again, activating that sympathetic nervous system, uh, that fight or flight response and causing a cascade of health effects as a result. So you want to make sure that your relationships are always healthy and um, mutual, like reciprocal, where they're benefiting you and the other person, not just one side or the other. And that there's not a lot of unresolved conflict. Um, so Libras are definitely valued for their fairness and their ability to see all sides of the situation. And so making sure that you are putting yourself in situations and positions where you can showcase those skills and be valued for it can be very uplifting and very helpful. Um, the other thing too though to make note of is that you can't please everyone and so Libras can sometimes be people pleasers. They don't necessarily want to rock the boat and so it's not necessarily that you avoid conflict altogether. It's that when conflict comes up, you don't let it get to you and you don't necessarily avoid conflict by trying to please every single person because that's not going to work and somebody's not going to be happy with you. It just, it's a matter of time, right? And so psychologically, those are all of the things that Libras really need. Um, I will say also that Libras need to stay hydrated because of that association, that highlighting of the kidneys, that warmth in that area. And so making sure that you're getting plenty of fluids and hydration to keep you know, your kidney function going and to keep, um, yeah, to keep your whole body hydrated, that's gonna be important for Libras as well. For Aquarius, so Aquarius rules the calves and ankles, the body electrics, and the circulatory system. And so those are all areas that are going to be highlighted, that are gonna need a little extra attention, that might be either more resilient or a little bit weaker, depending on what's going on in the rest of your chart and with your sun beyond just your sun sign. And so those are areas to spend extra attention. Aquarius, out of all of the signs, is the most heavily influenced by electromagnetic fields and electromagnetic radiation. And so you wanna make sure that you're not being bathed in Wi-Fi all day, every day. You wanna make sure that you're not living right next to a cell phone tower. You wanna make sure that you are taking time to just be away from your electronics, especially the ones that emit energy, that emit EMF. And so not having your cell phone in your pocket or sitting, if you put it in your bra like some women do, um, or like in your back pocket, you don't want it to be touching you while it's on. You don't wanna be you know, exposed to that any more than you already need to be because that's gonna throw your body electrics off kilter and that's gonna have a cascade effect where you're gonna be feeling off and anxious and unsettled psychologically and your body's gonna start to react to that too. So. That's first and foremost for Aquarius. Also, Aquarius is a little bit more impacted by technology in general. So getting away from your screen, especially because Aquarians, Aquarius sun signs in particular can have circulatory issues more so than some of the other signs. I'm not saying that you'll have that. This is not a diagnosis. I'm not a doctor, but um, making sure that you're getting away from your devices completely, like leave them at home and walking, running, moving your body can be so therapeutic for Aquarius. Um, Aquarius also does really well with um, frequency healing. And so just as Aquarius can be the most easily influenced by negative frequencies, like neg negative electromagnetic fields that are harmful to the body, they can be just as easily influenced by helpful and positive frequencies. And so things like radionics, um, you know, there are a lot of different electromagnetic devices and things like that. Like even just using magnets can be very helpful for Aquarians in particular because of that resetting of the electromagnetic field and how susceptible they are to that type of energy. 
And so they can respond very quickly to those types of things. Um, in terms of, you know, Aquarians, they need to always be exploring things that are unusual, that are different, that are outside of the box. Um, they like things that are weird. And so Aquarians always need to be exploring the new, the exciting, the different in order to feel ex excited and lit up and just vital on all levels. And that's going to help your physical vitality as well. Aquarians like to be valued for their unique perspective on things. And so making sure that you put yourself in situations where that skill set, that attribute can be valued because you do have a genius way of looking at the world that's very different than the average person. And so making sure that you can utilize that talent and be recognized for it will keep you lit up, will keep you feeling vital and will keep you motivated. So the fire signs, the fire signs need to be physically active more so than any of the other signs. They need to use their muscles. They have a lot of energy. They tend to have a higher metabolism. They need to go, go, go and burn some of that energy. And so being physically active is so important for the fire signs. If you become physically stagnant, your body, you, I mean, it will, yeah, it'll have the repercussions of that. And so you want to make sure that you're getting as much movement as you can every single day, that you're not just sitting still at a computer. Out of all the signs, if you're somebody who does computer work, which is be going to be really hard for any fire sign, you want to make sure that you're getting up and moving around the most, like not just every hour, but every 20 to 30 minutes, at least getting up and standing up and moving around and sitting back down because you need that movement. Um, they can be, um, so being passive for a fire sign can cause health issues. So you want to make sure that you're not being passive, that you're actively engaging in everything that you're passionate about and everything that comes up in your life. So pass passivity causes health issues. It causes um, that fire to be depleted in a lot of ways. Um, and just, just as much as you need activity, you do need to like know when to rest. And so if you are somebody who doesn't just have a fire sun, but you have a lot of fire in your chart, you might need to do the opposite of what I'm saying, <laughs> just to kind of put that out there. So people who have a lot of fire, they tend to have a hard time just resting and just staying still. If that's you and you know you have more than one fire placement and you've got all that fire, then you already know how to be active and you need to make sure that you're taking time time to rest. Okay. And so let's start with Aries and moving down the fire signs. So Aries rules the head, the upper jaw, and the adrenal glands. They are the most go, go, go of any of the fire signs. They're the most highly motivated, highly ambitious, and excitable of all of the signs. They're really good at getting things started. Um, and once they get things started, they can't be stifled. They can't be stopped. When an Aries sun sign is stifled or told no or blocked from exerting their will, that's when a lot of frustration and anger will bubble up, but that can manifest as issues in the body or psychological issues as well. And so you want to make sure that you're doing your best to make sure that you're unimpeded in whatever it is that you are initiating. Make sure before you get started that the roadblocks are clear because that hesitancy, that roadblock, that frustration that comes out of that, that's going to weigh on you and eat away at your body. And you don't want that. Um, Aries needs excitement and newness every single day. Do something exciting, do something new, do something that you've never done before every day of your life and you will maintain a high level of vitality, a high level of energy. Um, they are the most in need of a physical outlet of all of the fire signs because Aries is like muscle. It is action. It is that adrenaline, those adrenals and adrenal hormones. They actually thrive on that sympathetic activation more so than the other signs. They can go and go and go without getting burnt out. In fact, when they're not activated, that's when they get burnt out. So um, making sure that you're always in motion, you keep going. Um, and also that you're taking care of your adrenals too, because if you are somebody who's very highly active, Active. Again, you do need rest. You do need to support your body in the opposite fashion, even if you can handle more than some of the other signs. Um, Aries, because they are always just charging forward into things and they can be more impulsive, they are the most prone, I've noticed, to injury. 
It doesn't mean that you get serious injuries necessarily, but they'll like bump their head, especially their head. Uh, they'll stub their toe. They'll run into this thing. They'll cut their finger open because they're rushing, because they're excited. And so you want to make sure that you are not rushing too quickly through things because that's when accidents happen. Um, Aries really likes to be noticed or recognized for their ambitions, their achievements, their drive, and for their enthusiasm and excitement and how strong-willed they are, and their independence too. And so putting yourself in situations where you can be kind of seen or showcase those skills, that's going to keep you feeling lit up and vital. For Leo, Leo rules the heart. Um, it rules the thymus gland, it rules the spinal cord, and the back in general. You'll find actually a weird number of Leo sun signs, not a weird number when you understand this, but in general, a weird number of Leo sun signs will end up with back issues when they get into their midlife, especially in their 40s and into their 50s. And so you wanna take care of your back. You wanna make sure, I would say one of the best things Leo can do is understand proper body mechanics when it comes to lifting things and using your muscles and your musculoskeletal system as a whole so that way you don't end up weighing away at your um, back and your spine and all of that and have issues later on. So that's something that Leos should definitely take note of. Um, Leos are really good with, again, physical activity for all the fire signs, but Leos do best with like competitive sports, um, you know, doing something like that. So joining a sports team even in your older years uh, where you can do something that's exciting that's competitive um, especially if you are like the leader of the team in some way because leos thrive in leadership roles they want to be seen as an authority they want to be recognized for their unique talents and gifts and their ability to lead other people especially by example and so that's a really good way to keep you feeling vital motivated and lit up and if you can incorporate all those things into one like a competitive sport where you learn proper body mechanics and you are the leader and you're recognized for it, oh my goodness, you are going to thrive. Um, Leos are also really well known for their generosity and so they like to be recognized for that too. Um, but in general, doing things that are generous to help other people, being authentic, like when Leos are not expressing themselves authentically and they're being someone different than who they really are they're like playing a role or taking something on that can be very depleting that can be very difficult and challenging for a leo psychologically emotionally and then again also physically so you want to make sure that you're always being true to yourself Sagittarius. So Sagittarius rules the liver, the thighs, the butt, and also the sacrum um, and kind of like that lower back area. The sciatic nerve is also ruled by Sagittarius. So they're another sign that's very highly physically active and that could benefit from understanding and learning about body mechanics and making sure they're lifting things and moving their body appropriately. Um, but they also should take care of their liver. Sagittarius is a sign of indulgence. It's Jupiter ruled. And and so a lot of Sagittarius people, because they're so adventurous, they're so fun loving, they're so in the moment, can overindulge in alcohol, which is one of the worst things that a Sagittarius can do because of that liver connection, that highlighting of the liver. Um, you want to make sure that you're taking care of your body and especially that area of the body. You also um, need a lot of physical activity and a lot of action. But unlike Aries, which would do really well with like fighting or boxing or weightlifting, or Leo, which is more competitive sports, Sagittarius does well with high octane, uh, high octane, high adrenaline types of adventurous physical activity, like mountain biking, rock climbing, skydiving, you know, anything that gets you that thrill, that excitement, that's gonna be the best thing for a Sagittarius when it comes to movement and keeping you vital and lit up and excited about things. Um, they tend to be high, they tend to have a high metabolism. All the fire signs do. They're all good eaters, uh, but Sagittarius in particular tends to um, need a little bit more fuel because of all of that energy and all of that excitement going on. Um, and yeah, definitely needing adventure and needing to constantly be learning and experiencing new things. When a Sagittarius stops experiencing new things, they stop enjoying life. And that can lead to, um, you know, a cynicism. Like even though they're a jovial sign, they tend to not become like fully depressed. They can become cynical and they can become like more 
not melancholy, but there is this energy of like, oh, why bother? Like everything is just crap. <laughs> and so you want to make sure that you're always doing new things and exploring, expanding your mind and um, your body through experience, through the things that you're engaging with in the physical reality. <clears throat> and finally, the water signs. So the water signs need more downtime and more time away from other people than any of the other zodiac signs. This is because they are highly sensitive. They're very intuitive and very sensitive. They absorb other people's energy very easily and they're more easily influenced by the energy and emotions and experiences of others. And so they need to separate themselves from other people every now and again to have some time on their own to come back into their own energy. Water signs also need a creative outlet more so than the other signs. They need something that they can do that's creative to express themselves. And they do best when they have some sort of spiritual practice or spiritual connection. Um, also, another thing for water that could be pretty obvious maybe is that they thrive around actual water. And so making sure that you stay hydrated, obviously by drinking enough water and not drinking other fluids and things like that instead can be very helpful to all the signs, but especially the water signs, the fire signs too kind of need that. Um, but also taking baths, like soaking in a hot tub, uh, going to a hot spring, swimming in a lake, being near an ocean, all of these things can be very therapeutic for the water signs. And so for cancer, cancer rules the stomach. And so cancer in particular, out of all the zodiac signs, tends to be the most um, prone to stomach issues. I would say Virgo is also the most prone because it rules, sometimes when people say that their stomach hurts or they're having stomach issues, it's their intestines, right? It's not their actual stomach. Uh, cancer tends to have issues with digestion and enzymes in the stomach and things of that nature, especially when they are experiencing strong or extreme emotions. They are the most sensitive to other people's emotions. They are the most empathic of all the zodiac signs. And so emotions impact their health and vitality way more so than for any of the other signs. And so they have to be very careful about food choices because of that um, association with the stomach, but they also have to be very careful about um, how they feel and making sure that they're not eating when they're in a negative emotional state because that will impede and hurt their digestion. And also uh, making sure that the people they surround themselves with are more positive, more elevated kind of emotional people. You don't necessarily wanna be dragged down by everybody else's negativity, everybody else's negative chaotic emotions because you are a nurturing, compassionate, empathic, intuitive sign. You're gonna feel what they're feeling and you're gonna take that on. On. And so other people's problems become your problems, even just energetically without engaging with it physically or even mentally. Um, so one of the things that you're valued for is your nurturing and caring attrib attributes and your ability to always sense and understand the needs of others and to take care of the needs of others due to that inherent just knowing of what other people need. Pe people feel comfortable and cared for around you and you love that. And so taking advantage of situations where you could be recognized for that skill set, for those abil abilities can keep you feeling lit up, excited, um, really enthused enthusiastic about life. And so that's really important for cancers as well. Uh, cancers do really well with like taking regular baths. So that could be like your alone time, like I mentioned for all of the water signs, like taking a bath, soaking in a hot tub. Um, that's when things start to flow a little bit more easily. Hydrotherapy, like any type of therapy involving water, cancers tend to respond to very well. For Scorpio, Scorpio rules the colon, the genitals, all of the ex excretory systems in the body. So um, Scorpio is really about detox and Scorpio does tend to, as a water sign and as a fixed sign, it tends to hold on to toxins more so than most of the other zodiac signs. And so when you have the sun in the sign of Scorpio, you want to make sure that you're keeping those detoxification uh, channels open. So you want to make sure that you're sweating when you need to sweat. So maybe doing a sauna, you're making sure that your lymphatic system is flowing. You're making sure that um, you know, you're doing your colon cleanse or whatever it is that you do to get all of the toxins toxins flowing and out of your body. And just like Scorpios tend to hold on to toxins, they tend to hold on to toxic emotions. 
Scorpio being a water sign, which is very emotional and emotionally charged, tends to be the most closed off when it comes to expressing their emotions. So Scorpio sun signs feel their emotions very t intensely, but they don't necessarily communicate that to other people. And so bottling up your emotions can be super toxic as well. That can weigh on you and that could eat away at you. And so you want to make sure that you have someone to confide in, someone who you feel is very loyal and trustworthy, where you can express how you're feeling. Even if that means like getting a therapist or something along those lines. Scorpio needs an outlet for expressing extreme and strong emotion. They tend to bottle it up, and when they bottle it up, that leads to resentment, that leads to illness, and that leads to holding on to toxins in the body for whatever reason. Um, I mean, not for whatever reason, everything's connected, right? But um, it is a thing that seems to happen for Scorpios. Scorpios also need the, the most alone time. They need a lot of time to just sit and stew in their <laughs> emotions and in their thoughts, um, but also really just to like get in their own energy. They don't like to be subject to and bombarded by like everybody else's energy all of the time. That tends to hurt them physically. And so making sure you're having enough lo alone time, enough time in solitude, enough time to just think things through and be quiet and peaceful, that's gonna be really important for Scorpio. Scorpio sun signs are valued for their depth of understanding, for their ability to really see through things. They can see through all of the BS. There is no BSing a Scorpio. And so that's one of the things that they're very valued for and they're very good at. And so putting yourself in a position where you can dive in and research something, where you could showcase those skills of being able to cut through something and see the core truth that lies beneath it, that's going to help you feel lit up and excited. And so that's what Scorpio needs to stay vital and stay healthy healthy and stay happy. And then finally for Pisces. Pisces rules the feet, the lymphatic system. Um, it co-rules the immune system with Virgo. And so all of those things are going to be highly sensitive. And so um, they are actually the most sensitive of all of the zodiac signs, like emotionally, physically, psychologically, all of it, because they are very malleable. So if you have a Pisces sun, you need to, uh, first off, assert your boundaries. If you're not asserting your boundaries, you are gonna get depleted and all of your energy is just gonna leak out all over the place. Um, also, if you're not assert asserting your boundaries, you're taking on everything and everyone else's energy. And so Pisces sun signs, they need to be very careful of the emotional environment they put themselves in, especially when it comes to the people they surround themselves with but they also need to be very careful of the physical environment they put themselves in because Pisces people, when they're in a toxic environment, like where there's toxic emotion, where something negative has happened there, like maybe you live in a house where someone was murdered, you're, that's gonna impact you physically if you are a Pisces sun sign. Um, but also if you have like mold in your environment, if you have toxic chemicals, all of these things impact Pisces more so than the other signs because they are so malleable, because they are sensitive on all the levels. So you want to be careful about these things as a Pisces sun. Um, the other thing too is that Pisces needs to be very careful with uh, drugs, alcohol, poisons because they're more susceptible and more sensitive to those things um, and they need a creative outlet. So Pisces really needs a space where they can be away from everything in quiet and just immerse themselves in beauty, in fantasy, in imagination. And so having that space in your life and in your day is so important because that's where you're going to really be able to reset and to reset your boundaries and shake off all that stuff that's not necessarily you, to immerse yourself in what's beautiful and what's possible. Um, fantasy, spirituality also is really important to uh, Pisces sun signs. So having a really good connection to your spirituality, a really solid spiritual practice. And also Pisces tends to need more sleep than any of the other zodiac signs for the sun signs at least. Um, you know, the sun is your consciousness and Pisces is like kind of getting into that realm of imagination, fantasy, alternative, other dimensional realities. And so sleeping and dreaming and dream work and dream therapy can be very effective for Pisces. Um, Pisces are valued for their empathy and their compassion. And so anything that you can do in your life that showcases and 
allows you to actually engage in those talents and be recognized for them can be so vital and so helpful. They can light you up and help you feel more energized. They can give you back your life force energy. So things like doing charity work, things like even starting a charitable organization, even something just like helping your elderly neighbor down the street with like their lawn mowing or something like that can be just very nourishing for a Pisces, like showing that compassion. And so also Pisces um, with animals, they do really, really well connecting with animals. Virgo too, but Pisces especially, that can be very therapeutic. So like animal therapy or having a therapy animal can be really great for Pisces in particular. And that is all of the zodiac signs or all of the sun signs, you guys. Um, let me know in the comments section below what your sun sign is, um, if any of this resonated with you, and what you do to keep yourself feeling lit up, healthy, vital, and full of that life force energy that we talked about down in the comments section below. Thank you guys so much, so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one, and hopefully I'll see you in my Medical Astrology Foundations course, which enrollment is still open right now. Bye, everyone.